Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over targeting pods for the Hornet. The Hornet has two pods, the AT FLIR and the Lightning. They're very similar, most of the functionality is pretty much the same. The AT FLIR is the pod that the Navy uses and the Lightning is the one that the Marines use for ground-based Hornets. Both of the pods can be equipped on the cheek station like this, however only the Lightning pod can be equipped in the center station. I'll be going over the Lightning pod first and then I'll go over the differences with the AT FLIR. First, you need to turn on the pod. You turn it on with this power switch right here. Once you turn it on, you can go to the targeting pod page by going to the tactical menu and clicking FLIR. If you just turn on the pod, then you need to wait for it to warm up. It will say not timed out. And once it's on, you can see the pod. If your pod is warmed up and turned on, but you see this black screen, then just press and unpress VV Slave. We're going to need some controls for the pod. First, you're going to need undesignate nose wheel steering. You're also going to need to have the sensor control switch, and you're going to have to have your throttle designator cursor. First, we need to set the pod as the sensor of interest. So since the pod is on my right screen, I'm going to hit sensor control switch right, and now we have the diamond. Once you have the pod set as your sensor of interest, you can use your slew cursor to move the pod around. Right now, the pod is in TV mode, but you can also turn it onto infrared mode. If you press CCD down down here it will switch to FLIR and now we are in infrared mode and you can switch to white hot or black hot. You can press the declutter button to get rid of some of the symbology. You can have the pod in wide mode or narrow mode with this button and you can also zoom in with the pod using this switch right here. There are also two optional keybinds you can use. If you press the RAID FLIR switch it will toggle between wide and narrow mode and you can use the radar elevation control to adjust the zoom. As you can see when I press the RAID switch, it adjusts the field of view, and I can use my elevation control to adjust the zoom. Right here is VV Slave. If you press that, then it will make the pod point where your velocity vector is. Now let's get into the tracking modes. If you press the sensor control switch in the direction of the screen that your pod is on, then you can enter the tracking modes. For example, my pod is on the right screen, so if I press sensor control switch to the right, you can see it enters area track right here. If you press sensor control switch right again, it will enter point track, and point track is mainly used for tracking moving targets. After point track, if you press sensor control switch right again, it goes into designate mode, which designates a target. If you're in designate mode, you can move your cursor to just move the targeting pod again. Another way you can designate your target is by pressing TDC depress. Keep in mind, whenever you designate a target, if you move the targeting pod, the designation will not update, so you have to press TDC depress again to update the target. Also, if you are in any of the tracking modes, you can press the undesignate switch to go back to the regular mode. One thing to note about point track mode is that if you press TDC depress, you get this cross you can move around, which allows you to continue tracking one thing but designate a different target. Speaking of the undesignate switch, also you can double tap it to quickly enter velocity vector slave, and you can double tap it again to go back into the normal mode. You can also cue the targeting pod to a target point. If you go to your navigation display and select a waypoint, if you press waypoint designate, it will turn it into a target point and it will automatically point your targeting pod towards it. Let's go over some more controls on the screen. First is this auto focus. I don't think it does anything in DCS. There's also this here which is auto level and gain. If you unbox it then you can press on the zoom button here and that will let you adjust the level and also the gain. And you can reset ALG to set it to the automatic mode. You can also press this to activate the grayscale, and you can press this to freeze the picture. Now let's go into the laser. In order to use the laser, you need to be in air to ground mode. You can turn it on with this switch right here. By default, the laser works automatically, which means that when you drop a bomb, it will automatically turn the laser on at the right time. However, you can use it manually by boxing trigger. While trigger is boxed, as long as you have the trigger held down, it will be lazing. Keep in mind, in order to laze, you have to have a target designated. If I try lazing right now, you can see nothing will happen. But once I designate a target, then if I laze, it starts blinking. You can enter the laser code by pressing the UFC button. 
LTDC is the laser code for the actual laser on the targeting pod. LSTC is the tracking code for the laser spot tracker. The laser spot tracker is something you can use to try to find someone else's laser. In order to use the laser spot tracker, you have to have this switch armed. For the laser spot tracker, you have to dial in the code that they're using. Then you point your targeting pod in the general area of where they're lasing and press LST to try to lock onto their laser. You can also do a narrow search or a wide search. Now the lightning pod actually has an extra infrared laser. The infrared laser cannot guide weapons, but it can be seen by NVGs. If you press the mark button and hold down the trigger switch, it will start flashing the infrared laser. I'm going to switch to nighttime and put on some NVGs. Now when I start lasing, it shines an infrared laser. One thing to note about the laser, I've noticed that if you don't have trigger box and you're using the automatic mode, then after you finish your bomb drop, it will automatically disable the laser. So make sure you turn it back on if you want to use the laser again. That was air to ground mode for the lightning pod. Let's go over air to air mode now. If you press the air to air button, it will automatically bring up your pod on your left screen and it will be in air to air mode. By default, it will be slaved to your velocity vector right here. A lot of the controls are the same. You can switch between FLIR and TV mode and in FLIR mode, you can do black hot or white hot. You can also enable or disable the reticle with this switch right here. If you want to disable the velocity vector slave, you can unbox this button and slew the targeting pod around. And when you find a plane, you can press the sensor control switch left to try to lock onto it. You can also get a lock in velocity vector slave mode. If you point the velocity vector at someone and press sensor control switch left, the targeting pod will automatically lock onto them. Once the targeting pod is tracking someone, if you press slave, then it will lock your radar onto where your targeting pod is looking. Speaking of the radar, it is also integrated with the targeting pod in other ways. If you have a launch and steer on your radar, the launch and steer will show up as a square on the targeting pod. Also, if you have a launch and steer on the radar, you can press radar slave and it will point your targeting pod to where your radar is looking. That was the targeting pod in air to air mode. Let's go over some other functionality. First of all, if you have your helmet mounted display turned on, if you move your targeting pod somewhere and designate a point, the helmet mounted display will show where the targeting pod is looking. The last thing to go over with the lightning pod is the azimuth elevation page. If you are in air to air mode and you go to the azimuth elevation page, the hexagon shows where your targeting pod is looking. That was everything for the lightning pod. Now let's go over the AT FLIR. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to go over everything in the AT FLIR because most of the functionality is pretty much the same as the lightning pod. I'm just going to go over the main differences. When you bring up the AT FLIR, you can see a lot of functionality is the same. You can press this to put it into FLIR mode and you can use white hot and black hot. There is this focus button, but it doesn't do anything. There's also the automatic level gain. It works a little bit differently. You have to press this here to access the gain and level settings but it's still very similar. The first difference is the field of view. The lightning pod had wide field of view and narrow, but the AT FLIR has wide medium and narrow. Also, the targeting pod had a smooth zoom. However, the AT FLIR has zoom levels. If you are in wide field of view, there is no zoom ability, but if you go to narrow field of view, you can have zoom one or zoom two. And same thing with the narrow field of view, zoom one and zoom two. Some people like the lightning pod zoom more because it's smoother so you can set the exact level you want. However, some people like the AT FLIR better because the zoom is a lot faster. You can quickly jump between all the different zoom levels. One difference with the AT FLIR is that there is no marker. If I turn on the laser, as you can see, there is no mark button. So there is no infrared laser. There is just the regular designation laser. Also the AT FLIR designates targets a little bit differently. As you can see, I'm in the regular mode right now, but if I press my TDCD press, when I move the targeting pod around, I do not have to press TDCD press every time I move the pod, it automatically updates the target for me. If you press sensor control switch right, it enters scene mode, which is kind of like area track. And if you press it again, it enters auto mode, which is basically point track. The AT FLIR also has this setup menu, in the setup menu, most of the functions don't do anything. The only one that works is this one here, which allows you to change the coordinates from lat long, grid, 
none, or all. Air to air mode for the AT FLIR is slightly different. In the Lightning Pod, we had the Velocity Vector Slave, but if you had a launch and steer selected, you could do the Radar Slave. In the AT FLIR, it has these options. The first one is Boresight, which is kind of like Velocity Vector Slave. And then the next one is Launch and Steer, which is pretty obvious. Tracking a target in air mode with the AT FLIR is just like in the Lightning. You point the targeting pod at it and you press sensor control switch left. That was targeting pods for the Hornet. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.